Welcome to the Webster World Report, a special program linking Webster University's global operations during the pandemic crisis. And now, here's our host, Rick Rockwell. Here we are with another special edition of the Webster World Report, keeping you connected in our time of social distancing. This week, we complete the cycle. It's taken us six weeks, but we finally have reports from all nine countries where Webster University has campuses. This week, it's a visit to Leiden in the Netherlands. We'll also hear from the Academic Resource Center at the main campus in Webster Groves. And our travels aren't done. We'll also have the story of one of our students in quarantine in Vietnam. But first, let's hear from newscaster Tierra Gray. The U.S. may have a shortage of personal protective equipment, or PPE, to cope with the pandemic, but Webster's Jian Gong has an answer. Jian is a web services analyst for Webster's Information Technology Division based in San Antonio. She formed the San Antonio Chinese Alliance Face Mask Group. The group volunteers its time to sew together face masks for nurses, doctors, various other medical personnel, and others in need. We face treatment with um, to the local hospital, uh, hospice, and uh, we also give them to a um, local detention center. So far, Jian and the members of her volunteer group have created more than 2,000 masks and donated them to institutions and organizations in need in the past month. Webster has provided more help for nurses working hard to fight COVID-19. The St. Louis campus men and women's soccer teams joined together in a fundraising effort. They raised funds to provide free lunches for Mercy South Hospital and Progress West Hospital. Coach Mike Siner leads the men's soccer team, and Coach Siner's wife works as a nurse at Mercy South. Siner's sister works as a nurse at Progress West. That's why the team singled out those hospitals for help. We're proud of their efforts to aid nurses fighting the coronavirus on the front lines. Another loss for the Webster community this week with the passing of Betsy Smoots on May 1st. Smoots served as Associate Vice President and Chief Human Resources Officer until her retirement in 2017. She had worked for the university for 16 years. She was also an alumna of Webster, earning her graduate degree in management with distinction. One of her legacies was developing Webster's parental leave policy with the Webster Staff Alliance. This weekend, a historic first for Webster, the first ever virtual commencement ceremony. The ceremony will be streamed live by the university on its website and on Facebook. The ceremony was recorded on the main campus in Webster Groves, with segments in the Winifred Moore Auditorium and the auditorium in Browning Hall. The ceremony will include a scrolling list of the names of all graduates in the class of 2020. That includes all the graduates at international campuses and all the locations across the United States. The ceremony will stream at 9.30 a.m. Central Daylight Time, Saturday, May 9th. The streaming site can be found at webster.edu slash live. That's webster.edu slash live. For the Webster World Report, I'm Tiara Gray. Thanks, Tiara. During our pandemic times, we've acquired a new lexicon. We talk casually now about lockdowns, stay-at-home orders, self-isolation, and quarantine. That word quarantine seems to be used rather loosely these days and interchangeably with all those other terms and phrases. But it's really different. It means a forced isolation due to exposure to a disease. One of Webster's students lived that experience in Vietnam for 23 days after returning to her home country from the United States on the last plane back before the airport closed and Vietnam locked down. Her name is Phong Boy, an undergraduate photojournalism student in the School of Communications and a photographer for the student media outlet, The Journal. She joined us via Skype from Ho Chi Minh City, Vietnam, to tell her story. So I will check it very carefully 
by doctors from the airport to the quarantine place for a three for three people we stay in one room and uh, we were provided provided everything like free food mask personal stuff and uh, coronavirus testing for 14 days in the quarantine and however i had to stay 23 days in the quarantine because there was a coronavirus test positive case from a young student having the same flight uh, and same building with me in the quarant in the quarantine and uh, you know in the quarantine we were checked temperature two times per day three coronavirus testing for 21 days and we were not allowed to get out of the building for jogging or even for exercise because of uh, safety. But, uh, you know, but students try to play badminton, football in the empty room. And we have so like great and memorable memories during the quarantine. No, I met doctors. I had a talk to the doctors. I met some friends who are the same building with me. And I did some articles overseas about the doctors and uh, overseas students. You know, even though there there was no Wi-Fi, there was no TV, but the don't think it's boring in the, the, the uh, in the quarantine because I think I have a lot of things to entertain during the quarantine, such as like playing sports, uh, recording the video, TikTok, and photographing. The, that my suffering uh, being the lockdown. So no Wi-Fi, no internet. Yes. You were not able to, to have those things in, in the quarantine. It, it actually, we have the Wi-Fi, but the Wi-Fi is very not really good because a lot of people, maybe 7,000, 7,000 people in one place. So we cannot connect to the Wi-Fi in the same times. So it's very hard to take the glass you are a photojournalism student. You decided to document what you were going through in the quarantine. Tell us about your creative process to that. Um, actually, the first time I'm trying to uh, photograph like the light in the quarantine, but I cannot, I could not get out of the building. So I tried to think another another project like the light of the overseas student in one building. So I finally have a project about the student in the quarantine. And I have a, another one like the portrait of the doctors who are trying to take care of the, the, the quarantine people. I, I have an interesting story. Like I take a, I take a album photos for a couple who is who is repairing for their wedding. They are a couple tra travel to America for uh, for wedding photos, but the America like lockdown, so ha they have to back to Vietnam and they been in the quarantine 14 days. When I standing wait for the testing, a coronavirus testing, and I saw them trying to uh, taking the pictures by the phone, I come to the, I come to them, I come to them and try to ask, do they need a help? I will help you to take the pictures, and finally I take there a lot of pictures for them, like wearing the 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 wedding dress, wearing the vest, it's just like everything, like a wedding in the quarantine is very interesting, and the doctors and the security like support us a lot. And finally, I got a album of the free wedding for the couples. That must be so interesting to to <laughs> be able to share your skills with them. Uh, but but not only that, what a story! The fact that they're spending their honeymoon in the quarantine. Honeymoon, the quarantine. Yeah, <laughs> they they tell me that they they they're gonna have the honeymoon in the America, but finally they had the honeymoon in the quarantines. 14 days honeymoon, you know. What did you learn during the quarantine? Maybe about yourself and other people? The, the things that I can learn in the quarantine, just be brave, 
you know, take care of myself because no family, nobody can take care of your, take care of yourself. So I have to take care of myself, get make friends, social distancing, of course, and try to understand how hard the doctors working to take care of the people in the quarantine. Here in the United States, we have the stay-at-home orders, but we are still able to go out of our house and go shopping and do these things. And many people here are using the word quarantine and saying, we're in the quarantine. But you were in a real quarantine, 20, 23 days in the same building, not able to leave. That That is quite an endeavor for you to do that. Um, yeah. But we we were provided everything like food, mask, uh, gel, hand, hand sanitizer, and like fruit, everything. They provided everything. What is life like right now in Ho Chi Minh City? What do you have to do? What are the restrictions? We have to wear the mask when we get out of the house. The city is just uh, removed the lockdown uh, just two days ago. So everything is just back to normal life. And there's no coronavirus case in 10 days already. That That is very good news to hear from Vietnam. Tell us, do you have any messages for your fellow students or for other folks in the Webster system? Oh, yeah. Uh, just be brave. Keep in mind your health and well-being. The virus has prompted uh, all of us to gain the heightened self-awareness. I'm sure all of us has been practicing social distancing, uh, physical distancing, and coming together on the social media for mutual morale, boosting conversation, and sharing. I think this is the best way to counter the pandemic. Well, then, thank you so much, Fong Boy, our guest today on the Webster World Report. She is a Webster University student joining us via Skype from Ho Chi Minh City, Vietnam. Thank you very much. Thank you. Of note, Vietnam's actions to close its borders, restrict travel, and impose strict quarantines have had results. The communist government there reports 271 cases of COVID-19 and no deaths. Coming up, tips from the Academic Resource Center and a report from the Netherlands. More from the Webster World Report in a moment. At Webster University, you are prepared for the high demand careers of the 21st century job market. Undergraduate and graduate programs in cybersecurity, business, criminal justice, and healthcare management. Webster online degrees with a cost that won't hold you back and moves your career forward. Visit webster.edu slash forward. Webster Vienna Private University offers rolling admissions to a variety of bachelor's and master's or MBA programs. Students receive one-on-one -on -one mentoring and direct guidance from faculty, especially important in the current distance learning environment. We look forward to welcoming students back on campus this fall. Welcome back to the Webster World Report. And now our interview with Jean-Paul Marasing, the director of Webster University Leiden. When we talked to him, Jean-Paul was musing about not being able to hold a commencement in the Netherlands this year. He joined us via Cisco WebEx from Amsterdam. Um, yeah, one thing, of course, is kind of sad is graduation. Unfortunately, uh, that cannot go through. Uh, I've been with Webster 10 years. And last year was my 10th. Uh, and, and that was, you know, really great. This year was supposed to be my 11th. And, and you know, a year ago, I could never, ever have imagined that anything, you know, would get in the way of graduation. It's the, the most beautiful day of the year. We celebrate it together. Uh, and it's, you know, but as you can see, it's not happening. Uh, but at the same time, we, uh, we're going to invite the students from this year, supposed to graduate this year. And they will graduate, but they won't have a ceremony to join us next year. So we'll have two graduating classes next year. Uh, and uh, some of them have already said, you know, I I'm going to be there. I don't mind you know, if I have to take a flight or whatever. 
I want to be part of it. And the, the, the most important reason why we didn't go on with it is because we couldn't create the kind of atmosphere that we usually have for the students. We have uh, usually about, let's say, 100 students graduating, but let the parents fly in, the brothers, the sisters, friends, you know, and all together, we usually have an audience of about 600 people. It's in a church. It's a church where the Pilgrim Fathers used to live and, and, and held their uh, ceremonies. And um, so it's also, you know, from a, a historic perspective, it's very interesting to be there, especially for our American students. And we thought, you know, if we do something online and then also with the social distancing and what have you, it's going to be too complicated. And, and we want to do it the right way. So that's why we're postponing. We see these different decisions throughout the Webster system. But of course, um, you and your staff and others are welcome to join us for the virtual commencement that the main campus will be having this very week. And uh, that will be virtual and online and, and all parts of Webster will be recognized during that particular um, program. So any message at all that you would like to share with others in the Webster system? Right. No, I, I, I definitely, I'd, I'd like to do so. Thing is, you know, this is a crisis and, and every crisis has its own uh, uniqueness. But as such, you know, uh, we've had them before and we, I mean, Webster as a, as a whole, you know, as an organization, we've been here for more than a century. And in that century, you know, there have been more crises. And, and each time Webster, one way or another, was able to, you know, not only to survive, but to emerge even stronger from it. And if I look at, for example, the Webster Lightning Campus, I think, you know, we're in a great position to deal with this crisis. Um, first of all, if you look at our classroom size, on average, we have 12 students in a classroom. Uh, the, the larger Dutch universities, you know, they have three, four, five hundred students in the classroom. So for them, the social distancing is such a big problem that, for example, Lightning University, our big, our big neighbor, has already decided until next year's spring to stay online. So including next year's spring, just because they don't know how to deal with this. If you look at Webster, because of our uh, uh, small classrooms, you know, social distancing is not a real issue for us. The other thing is the online learning center. When I joined Webster uh, 10 years ago, uh, I was very much impressed that that center was already at the time there for 15 years. That means today, more than 25 years, we've been going online and providing you know, education online. I think that's a great strength that we can use in these days. And we can combine it, you know, like for example, offering more hybrid courses than, than we have been doing in the past. What I'm trying to say is that I think Webster has the right you know, tools, if you like, to deal with this, uh, this situation. Uh, we need to be creative. We need to think of, of new ways of, of doing things, but I'm absolutely convinced that, that we as an organization can do that, that we will be able, you know, to continue to serve our students. Um, so in that sense, I, I am, although this is a difficult situation, a lot of challenges, I am optimistic about our future. Many of us are hopeful that we are about halfway through this crisis. And some parts of Europe have started to open up uh, gingerly, a little bit in in in. Germany, uh, we even heard this morning a little bit in Spain. Um, how are conditions for you there in the Netherlands? Well, it's been, of course, a, a very uh, extraordinary situation. We, we, we saw it coming, the, the corona uh, pandemic as such. But at, at the very beginning, you know, you think like, well, maybe this will blow over. or It doesn't seem to be, you know, such a serious matter, but after a short while, we, we yeah, indeed, we began to see that, that this is a very serious thing. And then we started considering uh, yeah, quite early on, I think, about what kind of measures we should take in order to, uh, as much as we can, try to protect the safety of, you know, students, staff, faculty. So uh, I think quite early on, even before the Dutch government imposed measures, we had already decided uh, to, uh, well, basically to, to, uh, to switch uh, uh, the teaching from, let's say, on the ground to online, uh, and then mainly uh, web enhanced, in the sense that uh, at the very beginning, actually, teachers would still come to the, to the campus, be in the classroom, and then we would record it, and then students would be able to, uh, to go online and be part of the classroom. 
but quite soon after that we already decided to close the building and then the, the teachers are basically they are at home uh, and they're connecting online with the students so quite early on we, we switched to, uh, to online teaching and I think uh, it's been difficult of course for the students because they have to get used to it uh, but at the same time if I see because we did basically all of this in one week if I see um, how well faculty reacted, how well students reacted, I think I'm really, you know, proud of what we have achieved in, in such a short time. Well, for example, you know, the Living and, and, uh, and Learning Center, uh, we reached out to the students quite a while ago and said, you know, uh, if, if you want to go home, go home. If you want to stay, stay. And, and we, we expected, for example, that, well, basically all students would say, OK, you know, I'm going home. and have you? But the interesting thing is we still have about 25 students in there and our total capacity is 86. So there's really, you know, I would say uh, quite a group of students that said, no, 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 this is where we are. This is where we stay, you know, and, and we'll deal with whatever's coming our way. So I thought that was very positive, to be honest. Uh, the good thing is also um, nothing has happened, of course, fingers crossed, but so far, and it's been a while now, Nothing has happened at the uh, LLC. Nobody got infected. You know, students take their uh, responsibility in terms of, you know, washing their hands, social distancing, distancing, uh, that kind of thing. Uh, and I'm, I'm really, uh, let's say, impressed to see how uh, these students are dealing with the situation. And then, of course, they're still continuing their studies uh, at the same time. Um, yeah, so I, I, I find that really, uh, impressive. Jean-Paul, anything that you would like to add? Thank you for the interview. <laughs> well, then thank you very much for joining us today on the Webster World Report. Our guest, Jean-Paul Marising, the director of Webster University Leiden, joining us via Cisco WebEx from Amsterdam. Thank you again. My pleasure. Thank you. As we finish off finals week, it seemed as good a time as any to visit with Erica Ellard, the director of the Academic Resource Center. One might think the last two weeks of the semester could be her busiest, but she found some time to visit with us via Cisco WebEx from St. Louis, Missouri. It is one of the busier times. It can vary. Sometimes right after spring break or fall break is a busier time even than the end of the semester, but it kind of depends on assignments that are given and what is going on in their classrooms, which of course is very different right now. Uh, but as far as the Academic Resource Center and running that during a pandemic, other than the fact that everything is virtual, there aren't a lot of changes. We were in a really good situation. Um, you know, obviously Webster University has had online education for quite some time, and we have worldwide education throughout the United States in many different countries, students all over the place. And so we have always really made an effort to make sure that we could support all of those students from St. Louis, even if they had special learning centers at their campuses as well and different supports at those campuses. So we have always had an online writing center that we've run through the Academic Resource Center. And then last year in late June 2019, we implemented NetTutor, which is an online tutoring and writing service. And we have implemented that to support students worldwide so that they have help in subject specific areas, as well as also writing and ESL support. And that has been a phenomenal partnership with NetTutor. It's reached a lot of people worldwide even before the pandemic. But as that began, we saw an increased usage in that area because students couldn't come in and meet with tutors or writing coaches on ground here at the Webster Groves campus. And then a couple of weeks ago, really the beginning of April, we were able to bring back student employees, so our writing coaches and our tutors, to also support students remotely. And that's gotten really good reception from those students who had gotten used to working with those peer tutors and writing coaches as well. Do you have any success stories specifically about international students, not here in the United States, but our international students abroad who are using these services? Well, 
success stories, it depends on what you mean by success. To me, it's successful when a student connects with the resource and then uses that to improve their work. Now, if we're talking about did they get an A on the paper, that's a different story. We don't follow up to that extent, but our students and the faculty and staff in Uzbekistan have really been using the services more heavily. And that is wonderful because it is such a large and growing campus. Those students are looking for those support areas. So we have uh, a lot of students in that area using it. We've also been getting a lot of writing um, referrals through our Starfish Student Support Services Student Success Portal. And so what happens when we get a referral is that usually a, an instructor has raised that for a student and it's to connect them to services. So in Leiden, they do actually have a writing center, but it's staffed by one part-time person and she gets really overworked when she's in an on-ground space and with it being virtual, things take longer. Um, so those referrals connect the students in Leiden not only with their local writing support, but also with the St. Louis supports through our on-ground or right now virtual services, but also the online writing center and net tutor. And so I find those really good success stories, but that happens all over the world. You know, we see Ghana students from Ghana, from Thailand, Geneva has their own um, writing services as well. So sometimes we don't see as many of those, but Students are reaching out for writing for sure, and then also connecting with the tutoring through NetTutor. We have significant listeners in Uzbekistan for this program. So if I'm a student in Uzbekistan and I've never um, availed myself of the services of the Academic Resource Center, what would you tell me that you could help me with? What we tell everyone is that we can help you with anything that impacts you academically. So we have the tutoring and the writing services and for a student in Uzbekistan or anywhere really, they can access that support through NetTutor, which if they go into any of their courses in World Classroom, also called Canvas, they can find that NetTutor option in the left-hand menu for the course. And then they can just follow those steps into that. They can also get the support of the Online Writing Center. And so that covers their tutoring and their writing but we also provide academic counseling for students worldwide. And so academic counseling is working with students individually on whatever is impacting them specifically. Sometimes it's time management, sometimes it's study skills, test anxiety, test taking tips. Sometimes it's just helping them with time management and setting up a schedule. But those services are available to students worldwide as well. And some campuses, again, have those supports there. I know in Uzbekistan, Carrie Zeller does a lot with students. There are supports in Ghana. There are supports in Leiden. Whatever is at that campus, it's supplemented by what's available worldwide through the Academic Resource Center in St. Louis. Thank you so much. Our guest today on the Webster World Report, Erica Ellard, the director of the Academic Resource Center, joining us via Cisco WebEx from St. Louis. Thank you again. Thank you. Of note, Erica asked to be part of this podcast, and you can too. If you're a student, a staff member, or a member of the faculty, reach out to us. Send us a short audio clip from your cell phone or contact us via email to volunteer to be interviewed on the program. You can find us at COVID-19 at Webster.edu. You can also send questions or comments to that email address if you want to interact about the crisis. That address again is COVID-19 at Webster.edu. Also, check out the university's COVID-19 resources page at Webster.edu slash COVID-19. You can also hear our report on KWRH-FM, Radio 63119, that's 92.9 FM in Webster Groves, Missouri. Thanks for joining us this week. The Webster World Report is produced by students, staff, and faculty at Webster University. For news reporter Tierra Gray, associate producer Jennifer Gamich, and announcer engineer Jim Singer, I'm Rick Rockwell. Stay healthy and safe. The Webster World Report is produced by the Global Marketing and Communications Division of Webster University and through the facilities and copyright support of Webster School of Communications. This program is copyright 2020.